Now, Yakima, it's on the eastern side of Washington state, which is sort of divided blue and red, but it is a major city. And so it certainly isn't a deep red city by by any stretch of the imagination. There is some Democratic representation there. So this was really interesting. So last night, there was a regular city council meeting and they had, you know, a whole list of business. And one of those things was to decide whether to approve an LGBTQ2S plus Pride Month declaration. Here's how that went. Next is a draft of the Pride Proclamation, Pride Month Proclamation. Have council had an opportunity to read the proclamation? Mm -hmm. Any questions or concerns? Why are we honoring this? It's, it's a proclamation that was submitted to the council for consideration. I move to pro, uh, approve the proclamation. Okay. Second. So we have a motion by Councilwoman DC and a second by Councilman Herrera to approve the proclamation. Again, we'll, we'll vote by a raise of hands. Those in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. To those opposed, please say no. 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 All right, the motion fails five to two. No Pride Month in Yakima. And it was just like that, like no discussion, no debate. They're just like, no, it's not happening. Now, I tend to think cities shouldn't get involved in this stuff anyway. I mean, there are tons of Pride Month celebrations. It's not like it ceases to exist in a city if you don't have the city council spend its time and taxpayer resources like putting a Pride Month declaration through. Um, I just thought it was really interesting to watch how, because usually, I, I mean, you wouldn't see that, I don't think, in Washington State if one's brought forth, but also just how lopsided it was, like 5-2. Um, one of the people who voted in favor of it, you'll actually, um, uh, Janice DCO, you'll remember her because she was the one who called 911 because right-wing signature gatherers were collecting signatures outside of a Walmart. So I'll, I'll get into the Yakima Pride's response to this before I sort of get into my own thoughts on it. So Yakima Pride released a press release saying, calling the city council's rejection of Pride Month proclamation a betrayal of Yakima's values. It says, Dear Yakima City Council members, the recent vote to reject the LGBTQ2 plus, plus Pride Month proclamation is not merely disappointing. It is a blatant disregard for a significant segment of our community. This decision erodes the very foundation of inclusivity this city claims to uphold. The LGBTQ2S plus community is not invisible. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> we are your teachers, your firefighters, your small business owners. We are woven into the fabric of Yakima, contributing to its growth and vibrancy. Yet by rejecting this proclamation, you've chosen to marginalize us, sending a message that our voices and experience don't matter. So a couple things on that. I, I, I don't have to read that whole thing. First of all, in this state, you are not a marginalized community. I just refuse to believe that anymore. I'm sorry. I, I do. I, I consider myself an ally. But like, if you need the city of Yakima to vote for a Pride Month declaration in order to not feel invisible, come on. I mean, that's that's just ridiculous. You should be proud of who you are. Um, certainly, you're not invisible. I don't think today's society makes you invisible quite the opposite, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, and, and this idea that you need seven random council members to validate who you are it just seems like it's the antithesis of of you know the, the pride that you have in in your own identity um and they also put out the yakima pride people put out like a name and shame list uh, where they had the pictures and the names of all the council members and saying who voted no and who voted yes which i mean they did that on camera so it's not really you know a secret, <laughs> but the two who voted, uh, I, again, I mentioned Janice DCO. So, you know, he, here's my thing on this. And I'm sitting over here tripping over the LGBTQ2S plus Pride Month thing. I think you're going to start to see more of this. I think you're going to start to see more cities and entities who aren't anti-Pride, who might even participate in Pride festivities, reject stuff like this because they're tired of it constantly being forced on them. They're tired of it taking precedent over ever other things. And also it has gotten into this alphabet soup of things that aren't even related to each other. When you look at that, LGBTQ2S, so lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, is that what it is, or queer? I think it's questioning. And then two spirits. 
Okay. Those things don't have anything to do with each other. One of them is, you know, a couple of them, lesbian, gay, bisexual. That's a sexuality preference. Transgender, 2S, plus, these are how you identify, like your gender identity, two spirits. What does thinking you have two spirits have to do with being a lesbian? What does being transgender have to do with being gay? They don't. And so I think until, and we've talked about this on the show before, one of my concerns is that all this absolute gender nonsense being talked about and debated in the culture wars is actually going to serve to roll back gay rights. We, we were uh, looking at a poll, not, I don't remember the context under which we were talking about this uh, st study. It was a study on how actually like more black Protestants and um, uh, Hispanic Catholics Catholics, a higher percentage, are opposed to gay marriage than previously. Like, the support for gay marriage is eroding. And that seems really backward to me, but when I think about it and all these other things that are now being attached to that, you had gay people who fought so hard for equal rights and equal recognition, and then other people saw that success, and they were like, well, let me just glob onto that. You know, the transgender issue, the, the two spirits, the furries, whatever it is, they're like, well, now you have to accept me too. You accepted the gay people. Well, now you have to accept that I want to dress like a cat and I want to, you know, go to a park and hop around. <laughs> I'm like, no, you know, <laughs> we're just, I, I'm not. And then on the transgender issue, there's such a big difference between, you know, respecting and appreciating an adult's, you know, decision to be transgender and to live their life in that way. And then, you know, this sort of forced transgender craze on kids and what's happening there. And so, no, I, I'm just not willing to lump that into, you know, Pride Month. I'm just, I, I'm not willing to do it anymore. And to be like, okay, in order to celebrate and respect gay people, we have to, the whole laundry list of things has to be added to it. So the city of Yakima is like, no, the guy, I have to like, love the kind of older guy who's like, why are we honoring this? <laughs> it's like, I'm sort of like, you know, I don't know. So, you know, I'm, I'm an ally and I, I, for my friends who've, who've, you know, fought to, to sort of be themselves and have the right to marry who they love and all of that, I would hate to see those gains lost because we couldn't just stand up and say, no, two spirits. No, you can't, you can't glob on, you know, no furries. You can't, you can't attach to us. Like it's time to put our foot down. And until there's a clear delinea delineation between LGB and the rest, I think we're gonna continue to see this happening. <laughs>